Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, April 25th, 5.53 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. July corn futures down one and three quarters at 787 and a quarter. December corn down four and a quarter at 720 and a quarter. July soybeans down 23 and a half cents at 1664 and a half. November beans down 19 and three quarters at 1485 and a half. July Chicago wheat up five and three quarters at 1081 and a half last trade. July Kansas City wheat up 10 and a half at 1160. July spring wheat is up 13 cents at 1175 and three quarters. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it, guys. Uh, leave me a rating leave me a review if you have not already if you are watching on youtube uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button like these videos leave me a comment i'm getting really close to my long-standing goal of 5,000 subscribers on youtube if you need some additional assistance from me guys go to my website it is www.standardgrain.com check out my premium subscription service i send my premium subscribers a ton of information every single business day my morning email goes out before 6 a.m central every business day that includes all of my grain marketing recommendations a ton of weather info, charts, graphics. My subscriber-only videos are part of this package. I do a new one every single business day. On Friday, I did one regarding this Indonesia palm oil situation, which I will talk about here in a second. But I kind of broke it down, ran through some charts, discussed why this is important. If you guys are interested in this sort of content, give that premium deal a shot. It's 50 bucks a month. Cancel it at any time. No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. We had some rain across the Corn Belt over the weekend, uh, snow, rain, all sorts of precipitation. North Dakota, pretty wet. A lot of South Dakota, Central Iowa was wet. Uh, kind of Northeast Texas into Oklahoma, parts of Arkansas. And a lot of, you know, Illinois, Indiana, Minnesota saw some rains here and there. Um, on the radar this morning, you have some rain over Texas that goes in through Arkansas through Missouri, southern Illinois into parts of Tennessee. This deal is going to work its way out by tomorrow, and then you're going to be dry for several days. Uh, you won't see much in terms of rainfall at all uh, throughout the Corn Belt until, say, Thursday. And then Thursday, you're going to see kind of a smaller system move into parts of, uh, say, Missouri and Iowa. And then you'll have a larger system build in the northern plains by, say, Friday. It'll work through the Corn Belt this coming week. So the next seven days, I mean, you've got maybe up to an inch, inch and a half in uh, North Dakota, South Dakota. A precipitation expected over the next seven days but most of the corn belt is going to see lighter amounts you know a half inch quarter inch whatever so there may uh, very well be some uh, corn planting progress made this week uh, certainly more so than we've seen the last couple of weeks we've seen very very little progress uh, throughout the corn belt so far so i'm not going to say that this is an ideal forecast i know the temperatures uh, especially in the northern plains are going to be cool uh, still below normal in a lot of the corn belt this week but the drier conditions in themselves should allow some field work uh, to get going in, in some of your, you know, I states, some of your major uh, corn growing areas, but uh, not not ideal conditions, but a little bit better this week. Indonesia will ban palm oil exports effective Thursday this week. Now, the story has changed a little bit since Friday. Uh, the country is the world's top producer and exporter of palm oil, which is the most widely consumed vegetable oil globally. Uh, soybean oil is second behind that. Indonesia's president said on Friday that he wanted to ensure the availability of food products at home amid soaring global inflation. He said this, I will monitor and evaluate the implementation of this policy so availability of cooking oil in the domestic market market becomes abundant and affordable. Uh, the move was unexpected, according to most traders. Global vegetable oil markets uh, spiked on that news initially on Friday. Now, this morning, Bloomberg is reporting that the ban is not nearly as restrictive as was feared initially. They are reporting that only exports of higher-valued processed products will be banned. Exports of crude palm oil will still be allowed. So the soybean oil market, the palm oil market, correcting a little bit, uh, kind of a whipsaw is how Bloomberg put Put it. Uh, so, you know, high prices, generally speaking, of soybean oil and uh, more important, importantly, soybean meal uh, have kept U.S. crushers profit profitable despite high soybean prices. Uh, but this story is, is kind of a, a whipsaw back and forth deal here, given the headlines. Large money managers remain heavily along the row crop markets. Uh, funds were net buyers of corn and soybeans in the week ending April 19th. Large speculators continue to hold historically large net long positions in the row crop markets, and they hold kind of a modest long of about 15,000 contracts in the SRW wheat market uh, as of last Tuesday's close. You've probably seen some liquidation uh, since last Tuesday would, would be my guess. Uh, we've seen kind of a, a sh very short-term trend lower over the last couple of days in the row crop markets, but still a lot of length uh, in the corn market and in the soybean market, historically speaking. 
USDA reported a bunch of flash sales on Friday. U.S. exporters sold about 53 million bushels of corn to China, split between old crop and new crop, one of the larger sales we've seen as of late. There was an additional 11 million bushel corn sale to Mexico reported, also split between old and new crop, and a soybean sale to Mexico, about 6 million bushels, also split between old and new crop. So, you know, you're still seeing some demand here, some flash sales, uh, despite these very high prices. Crude oil futures trading sharply lower this morning. Your nearby June uh, WTI contract traded below 97 bucks early this morning after peaking above 104 on Friday. Rising COVID cases in China, is that's the big headline here. Uh, they've now got more cases in Beijing, sparking fears of additional lockdowns and reduced fuel usage. Uh, Shanghai reported uh, record daily deaths over the weekend. China, of course, is the world's largest importer of crude oil, and uh, this whole deal has sparked demand fears. Uh, another market uh, continues to decline, perhaps on some of the same stuff. Equity markets are uh, softer. The S&P lost 2.8% on Friday. That's an ugly day after a 1.5% decline on Thursday last week, and, and they're lower again here this morning. So kind of an ugly uh, couple of days for the stock market. That index is moving toward its uh, early March lows. It's now 11% removed from its all-time high, at least as of Friday's close. The Dow lost 981 points on Friday. Both indexes again lower this morning. Friday, I believe, was the worst day for the Dow Jones since October of 2020. Uh, moving forward, this is a big week for earnings. Uh, you've got a bunch of tech companies out. Apple and Amazon, I believe, are out with earnings reports this week. Uh, the market is bracing, of course, for more Fed rate hikes. Financial markets have already discounted a half-point rate rate hike in May. Uh, yield on the on the a uh, 10-year U.S. Treasury sitting at about 2.8% this morning. It has yet to top that 3% barrier, although I would imagine that that's probably coming at some point here. Friday is first notice day for May grain futures. Make sure you take a look at any remaining open positions you have there. Uh, we did have a cattle on feed report on Friday, and it was a little bit bearish. Cattle on feed came in at 102. They were looking for 100. Placements came in at 100. They were looking for 92. And marketings were on par with expectations at 98. So I'll go out on a limb and say cattle maybe open a little bit lower off of that news here this morning. The U.S. dollar is higher uh, ahead of the cash open here. The S&P is down 35. The Dow under pressure, again, down 250. Uh, bonds are up sharply. Gold's down 25 bucks. Crude oil down $4.29 in the uh, June WTI 97.75 last trade there. Everybody have a great week. I'll talk to you guys same time tomorrow.